What's going on, buddy? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. We probably have the biggest week of the year coming up. Now, I know I've said this probably 20 times. You heard it all over the internet that every single week in 2022 seemed like it was just a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. We've got into this hole of runaway inflation. Okay, rapidly rising rates, the stock market really volatile and an enormous amount of economic events. So it leads to no surprise that we have another exciting week. Now, last month, we got one of our rare all right, uh, CPI data coming in a little bit less than expected. I want to talk a little bit about the expectations as well as where the market is kind of pricing things in. I'm going to give you both sides to help you prepare for the week ahead. So let's get right into it. First off, this is the economic calendar for the week. Tuesday, we have CPI coming out, okay? Uh, Wednesday, we have the FOMC rate decision, which is gonna be two o'clock, followed by Jerome Powell at 2.30. Thursday, we also have retail sales uh, leading up to quarter four is gonna be uh, some big data. It's gonna give our, our first inclination on where uh, this quarter may lie ahead of Christmas. And then on Friday, we have quad witching. We have monthly options expiration, as well as when future contracts roll over from the December contracts going all the way over into March of next year. So there's going to be a lot of rebalancing uh, happening on Friday, as well as S&P uh, Global PMI. Okay, so just remember those Fridays when it comes to quad witching option contracts, if you're trading options, they move very, very volatile and can be a little bit spready. So I don't really go heavy on those days. Sometimes I don't even trade at all on those days. But let's talk about what happened since the last video I made. We've got this trend line, okay, that has been pretty well respected, all right, which is to no surprise. Now, I do think this is a little bit too obvious, all right, where, you know, it's one of those things where too many, when it's, when too many people can see exactly what's going to happen, that's when market makers will play games. Now, I would not be surprised, uh, and I've said this previously to, you know, and obviously it's going to be CPI dependent to see us break over this trend line a little bit, maybe even get a retest, okay, to confirm some support, get a lot of people, you know, continue to be bullish, get some eyes on it, and then we just get yanked back to the downside. Now, the number that is going to be very, very important is going to be somewhere in between this 416 to 417. Not only do we have, okay, what once was previous support becoming resistance, it's a very heavy supply zone. It would also bring us technically into a new bull market. Now I've covered this before. All right, that would be a 20% um, you know, reversal off of the lows, which by all means would officially, technically speaking, end the bear market and officially start a new bull market. Now, I personally don't think the macros warrant that at all. And because you know these, these times of economic changes and they take a long period of time, you look back, to you know, throughout history, especially with runaway inflation, it it doesn't really get solved in nine months to a year, uh, and a lot of the things that you know the Federal Reserve has already done, such as hiking rates, you know, and their quantitative tightening, all right, pulling money out of treasuries and starting to pay down some of their debt. The by the time it you know the economy and you know us, you know we the people start to really see some of these effects, it it, it takes months if not years down the road. All right, so. Just keep that number in, in mind going forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about CPI that is going to be, you know, coming out on Tuesday. The forecast, I think, is a little bit on the lighter side, okay? Now, because the way that they do their calculation, it comes to no surprise that this number is going to go down significantly from where we were on that high eights to low nines, okay? Especially because the energy sec sector and so forth, you've already seen a little housing start to pull back a little bit. I do think that this 7.3% is a little bit on the low side, you know, going back, you know, all the way till the start of the year, we've really been, been within, you know, one, two, maybe, you know, three tenths of a percent. We had, you know, uh, uh, pretty much, like I said, that at the three tenths of, of a percent of a change, we're going off for a pretty big difference here, you know, from 8.1 to 8.0, all the way down to 7.3, especially after PPI did uh, just come in a little bit higher than expected. Now, there is a little bit of correlation that says does show that near-term inflation expectations are easing because of the month-over-month -month climb has been low. It still was a bit of an increase, okay? Uh, so keep that, keep that in mind. All right, here's a, a beautiful article that um, really focusing on what investors are going to be looking for. Now, last time Jerome Powell had speak, 
All right. Uh, he had basically said that it's time for moderating the pace of rate increases may come as soon as the December meeting. 75 basis points cannot continue. We've known that. He's probably going to drop it down to 50 at some point. We're probably going to get a 25 before eventually we get the zero. We hold for a little bit and then eventually a pivot. Now, it's going to be really ironic and interesting to see just where the economy goes before that official pivot happens. Okay, so this is where investors are really going to be, uh, you know, focusing on not only that 50 basis point hike, Okay, but where are their projections for the next year? You can scroll down and take a look at this article. Um, you know, it's written by Forbes. It, it explains a lot. Uh, talking about the September fund, you know, Fed funds forecast, where things are going to lie over the next year. Investors don't just want to know what is happening now, but they want to know what is happening in the future. The market is very, you know, forward looking. Currently, investors are pricing in a, almost 80% of a 50 basis point hike. I'm a little bit surprised it isn't higher. Now, Jerome Powell has not shocked us yet. If we did get a higher you know, CPI rating, does that warrant another 75 basis point hike? Like I said, at some point, they're going to have to start to slow that down. I know their target was somewhere around you know, that 4.75 to 5%. That looks like where things are lining up. If you take a look all the way into, you know, the May through July, uh, you know, Fed funds, future Fed funds. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to the, the, the medium term, like I said, we'll zoom in a little bit higher. Okay, this this range, we, we've broken out of a little bit to the upside. We got above that, that 400, that 394, broken a little bit to the downside. There's been fake outs on both sides. Okay, we, we had it. Um, you know, when, when numbers were released all the way back on the 15th, we had it to the downside, same thing all the way up here. We bounced off that trend line and it's really just been a, you know, a bit of a chop fest. The volume has been a little bit stagnant as we've gotten away from obviously a Thanksgiving break. We're going into the Santa, you know, Santa rally potential, which we haven't really seen stocks normally do like the end of December. Are we going to get that rally and break above this remains to be unseen. Now just remember this 390 has been a very, very critical level. Okay. We have some other trend lines going dating all the way back from, you know, this October bounce, you can see this channel that we that we've slowly been in, I can even draw this out for you really roughly, we've had this channel, I have it, you know, on, on one of my futures on trading view, that we've just been bouncing off of, you know, kind of going back and forth, are we going to break it to the downside, are bears going to be able to really, you know, push this in, and, and bring this drive down really remains to be unseen going forward. So like I said, guys, we're still playing at the intraday levels that have, have changed a lot. I'm doing a lot with supply and demand. The reversals have been giving, offering a much better risk reward. I'm going to make another, you know, EDU video uh, talking all about, you know, reversals. And there's actually a supply and demand indicator that somebody had uh, posted on Twitter asking for what that indicator was. I commented on it and I figured it'd be a great time to make a video just to uh, explain to you guys, you know, how I use it. And it's one of the indicators out there that is not totally um, lagging. Okay. Now EMAs, I, I said this all the time, price action is the only, you know, true, uh, you know, indicator for where the direction is going to be looking forward and all these other indicators lag, but this one is actually a pretty good one. So I'll make another video on it, but that's it for this one guys. I'll see you in the next one.